Hello everyone and welcome to game number two of the 2018 World Chess Championship between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. Uh, after a really exhausting game one uh, where Carlsen had uh, a lot of chances, uh, well it's hard to say if he had a lot of chances, they were winning but uh, uh, just because a supercomputer says it's winning doesn't mean that uh, anyone should expect a human to actually win that game. Uh, but okay, you know, it's uh, if you ask, uh, uh, you know, a lot of different people, they will tell you a lot of, a lot of different stuff, uh, like uh, should he have won that game or not. But regardless, uh, I was very interested to, to see uh, how Carlsen will approach game two uh, with the white pieces after having such an exhausting game. I don't know, uh, it's hard to say uh, who was more exhausted by game one. Carlsen, who was basically torturing Caruana with the white pieces after the first four hours, uh, up until the seventh hour of the game, or Caruana, who was defending the position. Uh, but still, uh, this game will feature a very nice position, uh, already on move 10, that uh, most likely pretty much every grandmaster in the world uh, thought uh, about a certain move that was unplayable, but then Caruana showed otherwise, and uh, you will see that uh, in this game. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, I will also mention this, but at some uh, point during the game, I would like to also share a couple of nice photos with you. Uh, all of the photos are, uh, again, compliments by Nikki Riga, so be sure to check out her other work. There will be a link to her social media in the description below. Uh, here we have a very nice photo of Carlson uh, writing down, uh, well, uh, I don't know if uh, he's actually supposed to write down his name. I kind of, I'd kind of guess uh, they would uh, prepare this for him, but I think they actually do write down everything, even the name, uh, which uh, seems kind of redundant, but uh, you know, better to keep at least some tradition. So there you have it. Uh, also, here is a very nice photo of Carlsen drinking that uh, that water that is always present in every <laughs> chess tournament. I actually tried it. It's it's, uh, it's actually quite nice. Uh, has a, has a bit of, a bit of an aftertaste, but uh, you know if you like, um, it's so something like a hardened taste, but uh, it's very very different. I've never tried anything like it really. Uh, here we have uh, a very nice photo of Fabiano rocking that uh, St. Louis Chess Club suit. Uh, I actually saw Rex Singfield. He was uh, you know uh, mingling with uh, with uh, other people in the audience, uh, having a chat with with uh, a lot of. Uh, individuals also giving some interviews and uh, he was uh, actually one of the few people there that were uh, really concentrated for the, for the entire game uh, from, from the start to the end of the game uh, and also here we have uh, a very nice shot of the audience uh, in the in the uh, playing hall uh, also one of the things uh, I wanted to mention is that uh, for those of you who were able to to come and check out the games uh, either game one or two uh, what are your uh, what are your impressions uh, of uh, you know uh, the entire venue, the players area, uh, the the place for the spectators, the play, uh, place for uh, for the media, for the press? Uh, what are your what uh, really? What is your opinion of the entire uh, event, uh, the, the organization, the everything, uh, the the price of of being able to participate in, in such an event? Uh, really, really interested in in your opinion. And um, I, I'm very glad to have met uh, some of you <laughs> who, who were able to come uh, and uh, say hi to me. And uh, I, I, I really tried to, to uh, go around as much as possible to meet as many of you, take as many photos as possible. So uh, I'm very glad that uh, a lot of you <laughs> were able to make it really. Uh, made uh, this entire uh, event uh, even more special for me. Uh, and also th there, is, uh, there is one person that I was extremely excited to meet. Uh, yesterday uh, I had the pri privilege of meeting Demis Hasabis uh, from, from DeepMind. And uh, he's a really a remarkable individual at uh, some points of the conversation. <laughs> I, I, re I really felt like a chimp uh, even talking to him because he's saying he's smart would be would really be a huge understatement. Uh, but even though uh, I am sworn to secrecy about what was discussed uh, at this sitting with uh, him and some other very, very cool individuals, uh, you know, uh, very, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a good, uh, a good uh, time to be alive and uh, great things are coming. Uh, so that being said, let's check out this very nice game. It's game two. Carlsen has the white pieces and he opens the game with none other than d4. Uh, and okay, uh, we have knight to f6, knight to f3, uh, d5, c4, and by now you already know what we are transposing into. Of course, it is the queen's gambit declined. It's e6. Uh, knight to c3, bishop to e7. Uh, bishop to f4, we have castles, this was all played pretty much instantly, uh, and uh, it will be uh, 
every opening will be played to a certain degree uh, instantaneously because uh, one one interesting aspect of this World Chess Championship is that uh, uh, the photographers, there will be like uh, first 30 photographers that arrive at the venue will be allowed in there to take photos of Carlson and Caruana, but only for 10 minutes. Uh, that uh, That is an agreement uh, reached uh, uh, between uh, both uh, Magnus and Fabiano. So only only uh, uh, only 10 minutes for uh, these uh, 30 individuals that have arrived to take photos. Uh, and then the official photographers are allowed to take photos for uh, another half an hour, Nikki being one of them. Uh, so, okay, uh, we have E3, uh, C5, and here D captures on C5. And okay, this is still the standard theory of the Queen's Gambit declined. Bishop captures on C5, Queen to C2, Knight to C6. We have A3, uh, Queen to A5, uh, and now comes Rook to D1. And this is move 10, and this is the position that we've discussed uh, so much. Uh, not, well, not we here. Uh, but uh, it is a position that was played uh, plenty of times by plenty of grandmasters uh, through different uh, times in, in history. And uh, here, uh, well, the, the most common move was bishop to e7 by black, uh, and uh, Carlson was very much prepared for everything uh, up until this point. Uh, but here Caruana played a move that uh, I've already mentioned, uh, pretty much everyone in the world thought was unplayable. Here Caruana played rook to d8. And uh, I even saw a tweet by Nigel Short, he said that uh, uh, his entire life he thought that rook to d8 was unplayable because of knight to d2. And I've checked up, uh, uh, I've checked uh, up on a lot of games in the database where rook to d8 was played by weaker players, and uh, then knight to d2 was in fact used to to either win the game for white or or you know maybe draw the game for white. But rook to d8 never actually brought anything for black. And one of the reasons is, uh, let's say now if black decided to play d captures on c4, uh, you would get knight captures, and after for example black exchanges rooks. Uh, you would get queen d8 uh, offering an exchange, and after queen captures, captures, white would uh, start developing, and you can see that white has a, uh, some uh, lead in development, and uh, black really has nothing to show for here. Uh, uh, it's hard to say if this would in, be in any way enough for white to push for anything, most likely not. Uh, but uh, you don't want a position like this with the black pieces right from the start. Uh, but it's uh, even more impressive uh, what happens if black doesn't capture on c4. What if black pushes d4? And this is something that uh, most likely Carlsen spent a lot of time calculating. And before I uh, talk about this variation a bit more, the first thing you will see in the description below uh, is actually a tweet by Mr. Olympio. Uh, where he said uh, Magnus Carlsen's intense stare after Fabiano's Corona 10 Rook D8 threatened to melt the glass panel between the players and the spectators. So before uh, continuing to watch my video, do check it out. Uh, <laughs> you will see it's a nice gif uh, of Magnus uh, staring at Fabiano after Fabiano played Rook to D8. It's really, really a special and cool moment. Uh, so do check it out. It will take you like 10 seconds and then uh, come back and continue watching this. Uh, so to, to say why perhaps uh, Carlsen was calculating this d4 idea is because it leads to a, an extremely cool variation. Uh, knight to b3, attacking both the queen and the bishop here, the queen on a5 and the bishop on c5. Uh, and now after queen to b6, as the queen does have to uh, defend the bishop on c5, you can't go anywhere else. And it's also interesting, even if the bishop was not attacked, uh, rook to d8 takes away the, d8's, uh, the, the queen's retreat square. So, uh, after the queen moves, now comes knight to a4 with an attack on the queen and also a double attack. Now both of the knights are attacking the bishop on c5. Uh, you would get bishop to b4 check. Most likely, uh, e Car Caruana most likely had even this prepared. Uh, pawn captures, queen captures with check. Uh, now the queen is also attacking the knight. And now if you move the king, you, uh, you <laughs> you're not uh, really doing anything. you uh, black can simply either capture the knight, uh, d3 would perhaps be an idea sometimes in the future. Uh, and if you don't move the king, uh, you can block with the knight, knight d2, and now uh, nothing nothing really happens here, but... Uh, uh, one one of uh, one of other interesting things uh, is that if something like this is played, uh, then queen a5, uh, white will keep the extra piece. But now you are taking away the g5 square from white's bishop. Also, you're preparing e5, and here white wouldn't really have all that much to do here. And Carlson had to calculate all of this 
uh, to decide whether it was uh, even possible to capture the piece. Uh, because now, uh, pretty much whatever you do, black will punish you. If you try something like bishop to e2, uh, you'll get d3. And of course now your queen and bishop is under attack, black would be winning here. If you try something like bishop to d3, it's no better. Uh, because e5 now attacking the bishop, bishop to g3 and now knight to b4. Uh, your queen and bishop is under attack, you move the, uh, the queen and now uh, pawn captures on e3 and the white is falling apart. There is now a double attack opened uh, on your bishop on d3 uh, via the rook and the knight and I mean there's uh, again nothing to do here. Uh, you can capture, white will capture, black will capture with check, king moves and now you will e even lose the knight on a4. So uh, <laughs> this would be very unfortunate for white. And uh, again, there's uh, there's very little you can do. You can't. Uh, it's very hard to improve on this position. If you play something like bishop to g3, again, not much is happening. Black will simply start capturing. He will open up the entire uh, the entire center, and of course, capturing like this uh, will result in knight captures. The entire center is now uh, open up. The queen is under attack. You have to move the queen. The knight is also taking away the b3 square from the white queen. Uh, you would have to move the queen, now comes queen captures on a4, and uh, again, a very unpleasant position for white. So, uh, after this rook to d8 move by Caruana, Carlsen really had a lot to consider here, and uh, he did, uh, this is the first move where uh, either player spent some time, Carlsen spent 16 minutes on his next move, uh, and he decided to avoid uh, all known possible theory with this knight to d2 that was considered to be the way to go for white if black plays rook to d8 uh, and played bishop to e2. Uh, and okay, Caruana immediately replied knight to e4, uh, a very nice central square for the knight, also comes uh, with an attack uh, on knight to c3, which is a pinned piece, as you can see. Uh, again, Carlsen took some 12 minutes here, he decided to castle, also the king now unpinned, and uh, here you can see the power of preparation. Uh, Carlsen had to spend uh, half an hour for his uh, uh, 10th and 11th move. Uh, so knight captures on c3, uh, Fabi decides to exchange here, b captures on c3, and now comes h6. Uh, h6, uh, it was a really cool move. Uh, as uh, when I when I arrived yesterday, uh, I was um, uh, I was greeted by a person, uh, a developer from Lila Chess Zero, uh, Fol uh, Folker Twisinga, and uh, he said, uh, "Hey man, are you Agud Matra?" I said, "Yeah, man," and he introduced himself to me, uh, saying that he is one of the developers of Lila Chess Zero, and I asked, uh -huh, will you be like uh, following the game with Lila?" And uh, he said, "Yeah, you know, you, you can join me if you want to." And uh, of course, I I joined him uh, very happily, and it was uh, uh, right about this position. Uh, we were. He was explaining to me the interface of Lila, how Lila works, and 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 such. Uh, and uh, Lila was giving some seven alternative lines here, and uh, one one of the top lines Lila was uh, offering was H6, uh, saying that it is uh, it is by far the strongest idea here. And uh, I I asked him, okay, is this like really now? This is the strongest idea. I, as I don't know if it was the top idea was the strongest or the bottom. It's not really a graphical interface. It's mostly numbers. And he said, uh, like, yeah, but humans never play the top recommendation by Leela. And uh, it's very interesting here, uh, Caruana actually did play h6, uh, <laughs> the move uh, Leela considered to be the strongest. Uh, of course, uh, there's nothing to be gained by capturing this pawn. It is impossible. Rook to a1 would trap the queen. Uh, and the bishop captures on a3. Uh, also, you don't want to allow rook to a1. I mean, this bishop is never getting out of here. Uh, so, uh, one of the other interesting things is that, okay, the queen is eyeing h7, knight to g5 would really uh, force the black to weaken his position, so h6 definitely strongest, and Leela confirmed it, uh, you know, <laughs> on the spot. Uh, so, okay, a4, uh, not allowing a3 to be a target anymore, and here we have knight to e7 by Caruana. Uh, knight to e5 by Carlsen, and bishop to d6 now, and here Carlsen was a very much low on time, uh, and well, not not very much, but he did spend uh, like half an hour for those two moves, and he he couldn't really find a way how to push for any advantage with the white pieces, which is kind of important in a World Chess Championship match. So here, if if you try something like Bishop to G3, this knight from E7 is coming to F5. Uh, your bishop is now under attack. There's not not much to be happy about here. Instead of this bishop to g3, you could try something like knight to d3 to try and exchange the dark square bishop. Uh, but then after captures, captures, you have this pawn captures on c4. And then after rook captures, queen captures, and bishop captures, uh, we basically trade down into this uh, exact same material position. 
uh, where both players have a light square bishop, two knights, queens. Uh, but one thing you do realize is that Caruana has two pawn islands. There are two connected pawns on the on the queen side, whereas Carlson has two isolated pawns, a pawn and c pawn, and of course uh, this pawn uh, pawn mass uh, on the king side. But uh, those are three pawn islands, uh, which basically uh, Caruana's uh, pawn structure being more intact makes it much more. Uh, easier to play and and of course it is better so nothing to begin here and here Carlson trying to uh, gain at least some advantage he decided uh, after some 16 minutes but uh, pawn captures on d5 uh, a very interesting uh, idea because uh, now after knight captures um, on d5 there is a double attack against the c3 pawn uh, and here Carlson also spent some 11 minutes uh, to play bishop to f3 uh, bishop to f3 is a very nice move. Also, I think to consider maybe c4, uh, not allowing this pawn to stay at target and forcing this knight away from here. Uh, but then again, uh, it's a pretty forced variation. Knight captures on c4, pawn captures on f4, bishop captures on e5, uh, rook captures on d8 with check, uh, queen captures, uh, pawn captures on e5, and now bishop to d7. And now you would see that again, white's isolated pawns would be would be a weakness. Uh, there would be a, a, an attack against uh, this pawn. The queen will be able to come to a5 to help out with the attack uh, against the weak queen side pawns. And after something like, for example, bishop to f3, uh, black will defend his uh, b7 pawn, which is okay for now, a bit of a weakness. But after white continues attacking it, rook to b1. Uh, bishop will oppose, uh, calls a strong light square bishop, captures, captures, and again, uh, we will have this uh, trade at the down position, uh, where again, black would have a better pawn structure, and at some point he will play b6, and uh, white will not be able to take advantage of anything here. Uh, so, like we said, uh, after knight captures on d5, bishop to f3, uh, and here, uh, knight captures on f4, and uh, uh, Corona did spend some time on this knight captures on f4, uh, because here, if he decided to go for something like queen captures on c3, then we have a really exciting variation, uh, which Carlson also uh, saw, uh, as he spent a lot of time calculating it. Queen captures, knight captures, uh, and now black did win a pawn, but only temporarily, because now you have knight captures on f7. Uh, a very exciting move. Uh, now, of course, if black captures here, white will capture uh, the rook here. Uh, and of course, a lot of uh, a lot of attacks have opened up here. But uh, the idea is, after king captures on f7, now you get simple rook captures, rook captures, uh, bishop captures, uh, and now again it's um, it's a position where you would have this uh, uh, a bishop pair against uh, a knight and the bishop and the rooks. Uh, and although okay, you can capture on a4, but the bishop pair will be will be sufficient to to compensate for the loss of a pawn, uh, and uh, white's intact pawn structure on the king side will be much better than uh, black's shattered uh, king side. So this was the idea. But uh, Caruana doesn't think that this is good for him. Uh, after this bishop to f3, he decides to go knight captures on f4. Uh, e captures on f4 and now bishop captures on e5. We have rook captures, queen captures, and pawn captures on e5. Uh, a very similar position to what we already discussed. Uh, queen to c7 and now rook to b1, uh, starting to pile up on that b7 pawn. Uh, here we have uh, rook to b8. Uh, if you play something like queen captures on e5, this is somewhat of a poison pawn uh, because of queen to d3. Going after queen to d8, you can't develop the bishop so the rook would uh, uh, guard uh, uh, the last rank. One of the problems with black is uh, although he's hanging on and it's a pretty equal position in material, he, he is a bit more passive. Uh, so after the queen goes back to guard the d8 square, now comes rook to d1, and now it would be very, very uncomfortable for black. How do you prevent queen to d8? Uh, black would have to play something like f5 to create some breeding space for his king, and yeah, you don't, you don't want to allow white so much activity. So after rook to b1, uh, rook to b8 was played. Uh, keeping an eye on that uh, uh, b7 pawn. Uh, queen to d3, uh, and now comes a bishop to d7, attacking the a4 pawn. Uh, if you decided to capture on e5 now, for example, queen captures on e5, then you get queen to d8 check, king moves, and now queen to e7. Again, most likely black will be able to hold this, but now the f7 pawn is weak, there is a triple attack against the b7 pawn. Again, you give white a whole lot of activity. There are back rank weaknesses for white, so white will have to waste a move with h3 at some point. Uh, but still, uh, you know, you don't want to allow your opponent any activity ever. So after queen to d3, uh, bishop to d7, uh, a nice developing move, also comes with an attack against the a4 pawn. 
and here comes a5. Now a5 is playable because the queen cannot capture it as the bishop on d7 would be would be very weak. Uh, bishop to c6, uh, we have queen to d6 offering a queen trade and Caruana, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, goes for it. Queen captures, pawn captures, bishop captures on f3, pawn captures on f3, and now comes uh, king f8. Caruana will now start uh, bringing his king into the game, block the pawn, and so on. Uh, c4, uh, a very nice move. If you try a6 immediately, then b6 will be super fine for black. Bla the black rook will now be able to move. There will be no more uh, pawn weakness on b7. Uh, so instead, first Carlsen prepares it. c4. Uh, we have king to e8, Corona keeps on bringing his king into the game, uh, a6 now, b6, and now comes c5. This was Carlsen's plan, uh, simply uh, going uh, f uh, for that uh, b6 pawn as the rook on b8 is undefended. Uh, king to d7, and now comes pawn captures on b6, pawn captures on b6, and now a7, uh, forcing the rook to go to a8, so you can capture the b6 pawn. Uh, rook to a8, rook captures on b6, rook captures on a7, and now king to g3. Uh, Caruana is uh, not up upon here, but uh, of course, uh, at some point, he will capture the, the d6 pawn, he will simply move this pawn, move the king here, place, uh, put the rook behind the pawn, and then capture it. Uh, the white king is simply too far away to come and help out. Uh, and uh, such a move was played, we have e5, uh, rook to b4, and now f5, uh, rook back to b6, and now king does come to e6. Uh, now, like we mentioned, the rook is coming here, uh, you will capture the pawn, and then you will have a 4-3 to three advantage, which uh, will most likely be winning. Uh, so, uh, Carlsen decides to give up a pawn with check. It's d7, king captures, and now rook attacks uh, uh, the pawn. Uh, similarly, Carlsen was up a pawn yesterday, and he was trying to push for a win, uh, being up a pawn advantage in a rook end game. Uh, here, the situation is opposite. It's Carlsen actually who's down a pawn in a rook end game, and he will uh, now has uh, have to try and defend his position. Uh, king to e6, and now comes uh, king b6 check. King f7, king to b5, again, uh, rook to b5 attacking the pawn. King defends the pawn, rook to b6 check again, king g5, and now Carlsen attacks the pawn on e5 once again. Uh, king defends it on f4, uh, and rook uh, to b4 check. We have uh, e4, pawn captures, pawn captures, and now h3. Uh, taking away the g4 square from the black king, uh, we have rook to a5 by Caruana, and now comes rook to b7, attacking the g7 pawn. Rook to g5 check, king moves to f1, and now comes uh, rook to g6. Uh, rook to b4, not allowing black to push uh, this pawn uh, any time. Uh, rook to g5, and now comes rook back to b7. Rook to g6, rook to b4, uh, and it was actually in this position on move 49 that the players agreed to a draw, as uh, no no more uh, progress can be made here for black, even though he's up a pawn. Uh, one thing you might try uh, is... Um, well, if you tried something like uh, king king f3, then white would simply not allow you to stay there. Rook b3 check, uh, and now after king f4, he would again go rook to b4, and we would have this exact same position. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you try something like rook to e6 to prepare king f3 and only then push e3, uh, white will simply kick you back with king to g2. Uh, the king is no longer allowed on f3. Uh, and if, if, if there are any new players here, uh, we might also uh, check a variation what happens if black simply simply starts pushing all of his kingside pawns, uh, exchanges, uh, let's say g5, and let's say white is simply repeating moves, waiting to see what black does, let's say h5, g4. Uh, now white will simply capture, and now if king captures, you will have this very unfortunate f3, this comes with check, the e pawn is pinned, king has to move, captures, 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 and after king captures, this will be a draw, uh, as um, there will be no way <laughs> no way for black uh, to, to get the white king uh, away from the queen queening square and of course it will end in a stalemate uh, and on the other hand after h captures on g4 if you don't capture with the king if you capture with the h pawn uh, it doesn't really change anything still um, white will move and now after g3 or or anything any move you try to break through this uh, white will again play this f3 move and still the e4 pawn is pinned there is nothing to do here captures 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 uh, it's a draw by insufficient material. Uh, so yeah, uh, after rook to b4, uh, not uh, such an exhaustive, uh, exhausting game like yesterday. I think this game uh, was like a four-hour game, uh, or even three hours, three hour and something. Uh, yeah, three hour and something uh, opposed to a six-plus-hour first game. So I guess um, I wouldn't say the players were tired. As uh, I mean, 
<laughs> they came really prepared and uh, but it seems that Carlson uh, Caruana just found a really 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 cool way uh, of getting a quick draw with the black pieces and then he will look for his chances again in game three with the white pieces and interestingly uh, while talking to the alpha zero uh, not alpha zero uh, lila chess zero developer he said that uh, Caruana was also using lila in during his preparations so you know very interesting and uh, also very interesting you know uh, perhaps in 2020 we will see maybe after you know uh, self-learning ais become even more powerful how will this affect uh, human chess so yeah uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, once again, uh, I, I would like to thank all of you who have waited for my video. You are an, a truly an excellent subscriber. Although feel free to check out all of the other videos as well, as I'm sure uh, there you will learn even more. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of vast knowledge to be to be gathered here. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Ivan Yarovoy, uh, Gareth Davies, uh, Igor Ratiner, Igor Ratiner, uh, Christer... Uh, Sorry, uh, Christer Eckholm and uh, Robert Youngquist uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you soon, uh, most likely with game three, but perhaps uh, we will have uh, an interesting game in between. Uh, also, I'm uh, flying back uh, to Croatia uh, tomorrow morning. So the maybe not next, but uh, then you will again uh, have my usual setting and not this hotel room. Uh, thank you all and I will see you soon.